So you want to make a thing and you don't really know where to start. You can start here because we're going to find out if 3D printing is right for you and your project. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to the channel. My name's Grant, and I'm the owner of 3D Musketeers. We make stuff for people all over the world. Whether you need one thing or you need a lot of things, we're here to help. The big question that we get asked is if 3D printing is right for this particular project, this particular use case, that particular person. And if you own a 3D printer, chances are you've had this question asked to you as well. Unfortunately, the answer is always it depends. Every situation is different. Let's take this piece for example. So let's say you're Thai Tampa Bay, Thai being the Indus Entrepreneurs, and you have an event coming up, TyCon 2023. No, not sponsored by Porsche, although it should be because those names work really well with each other. And you want to make some really awesome centerpieces for your tables. Well, there are a few ways to do it. You could certainly go the traditional way by carving this out of a block of wood and well, if you got someone that's got that equipment laying around, that might not actually be a bad idea. But since you don't have people with that equipment laying around, 3D printing is a great option. 30 pieces are going to take us here less than 48 hours to produce. You know, when we have all the material in. And that's running every machine as fast as we possibly can. 3D printing is great for those kind of things where you just need stuff for once or twice and then it's gonna go up on a shelf and not get used for a while. 3D printing is great if you are looking at doing an end use product. So are you an inventor? And you want to produce something that ends up getting sold on store shelves? Well, I would question if maybe going to store shelves is the right option, especially if you're a first time inventor. And we've actually talked with inventors that have made it big and others that have done other things with their lives. And it's really awesome. We'll card to one of my favorite episodes with an inventor, which is talking with Chun Ung, the inventor of Rainbow Loom. And we'll link to some other ones in the description down below, including one with licensing mogul, Lisa Lloyd, who talks all about why the first time inventor doesn't really need to go to market, but we have a problem. See, 3D printing, especially some of the more affordable options, is very much a hot glue gun. Now, it's a much more detailed hot glue gun, but at the end of the day, this is the business end of a 3D printer, with the nozzle here at the end being a diameter of 0.4 millimeters, meaning that it's not going to produce detail much finer than 0.4 millimeters. And you might say, well, Grant, I don't need detail finer than that. You do especially if you want something to be smooth. 3D printing can make smooth prototypes, especially when you look at a resin material, but resin is toxic, at least when it's uncured. And that enables 3D printing to solve multiple problems. And sure, you can look at metal 3D printing, but if you found this video, you probably don't need metal 3D printing. And if you think you do, reach out to us, we're happy to help. Metal printing is very specific and is often really only used in heavy industry. And while yes, you can get metal parts made. In fact, I'm prototyping a tripod base plate that fits with a peak design clip that I use for one of our filming cameras. I can get it 3D printed in stainless steel for relatively affordable, like 50 bucks or less, but I have to make that design. And that's where if you ask if 3D printing is right for you, you actually have to ask, are you ready to commission a custom piece of art? Because while this might not seem like something that is very complicated, and truth be told, it was like a 15 minute design because we already had the logo. We didn't have to do anything extra special to make it the way that it is. All we had to do is make sure that we added some lines here to make sure that all the individual pieces connect. That's important. That way they don't just fall apart when they come off the build plane and it's got some decent structural strength to it. These are gonna end up being handled. We know they're gonna be handled and that's okay. We want them to be handled, but we also need them to survive somebody messing with them and not get shattered. That's part of why 3D printing was chosen for this because it's not only cost effective, but these are incredibly lightweight. These weigh less than half a pound. And when you need to make 30 of them, if they're heavy, it starts to become a problem when you look at storage as well as someone that can actually carry 40 plus pounds in a bucket. 3D printing is great when you're looking at a thousand or less. And 
every single job will be a little bit different. We here at 3D Musketeers will actually walk you through what is called a break-even analysis to help you understand when it is best to say, you know what? I'm gonna go do injection molding because injection molding is wonderful, but it has a massive upfront cost. And thankfully, the art that we make is perfectly usable in injection molding. And in fact, if we know that your end use case is injection molding, then we're gonna help you make sure that your parts are designed for manufacturing and not just designed for additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing being 3D printing. There is no one perfect answer here, except give it a shot. 3D printing is awesome and lets you hold something that you never thought that you could hold before in your hands. You've got quite literally the whole world in your hands and you can make whatever you want. Limitations are only two, imagination and budget, everything else we can work with. And that is consistent across anybody that owns a 3D printer. See, the cool thing is that these machines are able to make basically everything, but that's also their downside because it means that you are forced to make a decision of what cool stuff that you want to start with. And so we recommend if you've never done 3D printing before, go online. There are awesome model repositories that exist out there. And in fact, we'll card to a video that we did a while back looking at some other options out there. With some of our favorites being printables, thangs, cults, my mini factory, and of course, I'm sure there are so many more. These websites enable you to go find what you're looking for. And hey, maybe you get lucky and somebody else did most of the work for you and you can just get something printed. And in the event that you can't find exactly what you need, you can certainly find a test part to get printed, to get a sample and see what works. Great example. We have two logos here. The colors are slightly different. This is blood red light glitter and this is red ice both colors from Printed Solid of their Jesse PLA line, which is made in America. In fact, it's made in Newark, Delaware. Right about this time last year, we toured their facility and kind of showed how the filament is made. We'll cart to that video so you guys can take a look. This was to help them better understand it because photos are great and a picture tells a thousand words. Last time I checked at least. This lets you actually see it in person and see what you like best. And the decision was made at the blood red like glitter you're out of here. And instead, we went with the red ice. The slightly translucent nature of it and the more vibrant red that my camera doesn't really do a great job of showing was a much better fit for their brand. That's the cool thing about 3D printing. There are tons of colors available. And if the color that you want isn't available, there are quite a few manufacturers out there that will do even somewhat short production runs, 40, 50 rolls of filament, which are a kilogram or so each to produce a color that fits your exact needs. And that's pretty awesome. So that if you have a brand with very specific color requirements, you can get those parts made without any extra painting. And this is not painted. The color is through and through the entire plastic. So even if you go to break it, it's the same color on the inside. That's the cool thing about 3D printing. These parts, don't have to be solid. And in fact, this one is mostly hollow. If I shine a light on the backside, you can actually see some of the holes that exist in the model. This is gyroid infill, and it looks pretty awesome when it's being printed. But at the same time, it reduces the weight, reduces the print time, and still gives you something that fits your needs as best as possible. 3D printing, in my opinion, is right for pretty much any circumstance, but it comes down more to what the project needs and how fast it is needed. If you have prior art and you're good to go, 3D printing is perfect. Send us the STL file, send us the step file, and we'll get it rolling for you. And it'll be done in a couple of days time. However, if you need that custom art, that can take a little bit of time, but that's okay. See, working with the right people will really change the way that this process works. So if you have an idea and you wanna get something made and you are asking yourself, is 3D printing the right thing for your project. Reach out to us. You can email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, or you can fill out the contact form on our website, book some time with us and have a meeting because that's the kind of thing that helps make projects like this a lot easier. But again, 3D printing is not always appropriate. There are often times where traditional manufacturing means are a much better fit. And in fact, we work with people all the time where 3D printing doesn't work and where it makes more sense for them to just cobble it out of some wood. We had an individual the other day that reached out that needed to make a custom mount for a camera. And in talking with them, they seemed pretty handy. And it was very obvious to me that the best fit for them was just to make something with the tools that they had in front of them. They agreed. 
They didn't realize that they could do it, but after hearing it from someone who has made stuff before, it made a whole lot more sense to them. And from what I'm aware, their solution is working perfectly. But should they need 3D printing? We're here. If you need a custom solution for a project that just doesn't exist and you can't find it off the shelf and you need just one piece, 3D printing is perfect for you. And the great thing is, it is getting very affordable. Now there is one problem with 3D printing. The education around it isn't amazing. And we hope to change that here at 3D Musketeers, especially with our upcoming classes that will be available through the Making Awesome Academy. More details on that coming soon. If you do wanna hear more about that, Make sure to get subscribed, and hey, while you're down there uh, tickling that subscribe button, I don't know, see if the like button likes it too. It normally does. And let us know, how can we help you? And what have you done in the past with 3D printing that is absolutely changed the way that you look at things? Because it's what I love about this technology. As soon as you get access to it, your whole world is different. And you realize that every single problem that you have in life can probably be solved with 3D printing, including that pain in the butt neighbor and the president of your homeowners association. You can probably do some things with 3D printing just to make their lives slightly more complicated. I'm not saying you should, but you could. But remember, if you're looking to make 50,000 of something, 3D printing is probably not the right deal for you as an end use part. When you look at doing prototyping, cause you gotta make sure it's right before you spend all the money on tooling or a mold to get an injection mold made. Whether you make it here in the United States or you make it overseas somewhere, the cost for production is incredibly expensive, especially when it comes to doing things like packaging and trademarks and marketing. That's the hard stuff. Making the parts is the easy stuff. Start slow, start with 3D printing. I know the process of making the next billion dollar idea is complicated. It takes time and effort. I get it. But if you'd make the right steps, you'll make less errors and those errors will cost you less money. So is 3D printing right for your project? Probably. And if you have any more questions, you could always reach out to us. But that's all I have for you guys today. Remember, we're here to help. Don't be afraid to reach out. Heck, you can call us. We have a public phone number. If you have questions, feel free. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you haven't done so already, leave a like. It helps the channel out immensely. Speaking of helping, I want to thank all of our helpers and supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what all of you do in making these videos possible. Without your generous donations, we wouldn't be here right now because uh, it's expensive to run a YouTube channel. If you're looking for something else to watch, take a look at what Apple is doing with watches right below me, where Apple is reportedly using binder jetting metal technology to 3D print the cases for the upcoming Apple Watch 9. It's pretty awesome. I think you'll like it. Next up will be my talk with Ken Johnson, the inventor of Phase 10, the second best-selling card game on the planet. I will see you all down in the comments and in the next one. Take care.